Great historic mistake. Stoltenberg urges NATO not to allow Putin to win war. NATO members should quickly provide additional military assistance to Ukraine to avoid a great historic mistake of a Russian victory on the battlefield, according to NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. He emphasizes that Ukrainians have enough courage, they lack ammunition. Together we have the capacity to provide Ukraine with what it needs. Now we need to show the political will to do so, the Secretary General said. Stoltenberg emphasizes that NATO countries must dig deep and deliver quickly, as delay will lead to real consequences on the battlefield. So this is a critical moment. It would be a great historic mistake to allow Putin to prevail, he said. Jens Stoltenberg told that since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russian occupiers have lost 350,000 of their soldiers killed and wounded, states the NATO Secretary General. He mentions that the number of killed and wounded Russian soldiers is based on data from Western intelligence services. However, he has not specified the exact number of Russian military personnel killed. According to Stoltenberg, the losses of the occupiers in Ukraine have significantly increased recently. The aggressor country is paying a very high price for minor successes in terms of controlling certain territories. The Secretary General reminds that the Ukrainian armed forces also sank a significant part of the Russian Black Sea fleet. Additionally, Ukrainian forces managed to shoot down important and expensive long-range airborne early warning and control aircraft A-50. It should be noted that the data from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine differs from what was announced by the NATO Secretary General. It is known that since the start of the full-scale war, Russian occupiers have lost 427,840 of their soldiers. Shocking claim from Russia NATO will divide Ukrainian territory between countries of alliance. French President Emmanuel Macron has brought up the idea of sending NATO soldiers into Ukraine because members of the US-led bloc are plotting to divide up the country. Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said, Macron first suggested two weeks ago that when it came to NATO boots on the ground in Ukraine, no option should be off the table, but was publicly disavowed by most NATO members. He has since argued that France might send its own soldiers should Russia break through to Kiev or Odessa. All these statements that Macron and other NATO politicians make about the possibility of introducing contingents or some kind of paramilitary units into the territory of Ukraine are related to the partition of what they see as the remnants of Ukraine. Zakharova said at a press briefing in Moscow, territorial aspirations help explain why Kiev has not been invited to join the bloc yet. Zakharova argued, this would require all NATO members to recognize Ukraine's borders and not all of them are willing to do so, she added. She said that they are ready to occupy and partition Ukraine. The moral preparation of the population in both NATO countries and Ukraine is already underway, Zakharova said with some politicians speaking about such an outcome openly. All this is happening as usual with NATO members under a false flag. They talk about countering Russia but are in fact starting to divide the remains of Ukraine between themselves, she said, adding that this should serve as a warning to those who entrust their fate to NATO. As for Paris, Zakharova said, French troops invaded Russia in the early 19th century and again in the early 20th. France would do well to remember how that ended. South Korean defense chief orders plan to kill Northern Korean leader Kim Jong-un. South Korean Defense Minister Shin Won-sik has called for quickly killing North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and other top officials in Pyongyang in the event that war breaks out on the peninsula again. Shin issued this order telling South Korea's Army Special Warfare Command to make preparations for taking out North Korea's leader. If Kim Jong-un starts a war as a key unit of Korea, massive punishment and retaliation, you must become the world's strongest special operations unit to swiftly eliminate the enemy leadership, he said during a visit to the commando unit southeast of Seoul in Incheon. Korea, massive punishment and retaliation is South Korea's defense doctrine for delivering a debilitating retaliatory strike in response to a North Korean attack. It's part of Seoul's three-axis system for deterring a new war with Pyongyang, which also includes preemptively eliminating a North Korean missile launch and shooting down missiles in flight. Shin made his visit to the Special Forces Command amid South Korea's ongoing Freedom Shield military exercise with the U.S. military. Kim has called such joint exercises a rehearsal for invasion of North Korea and a provocation of war. 
The two Koreas have technically been at war for over seven decades after their 1950 to 1953 conflict ended with an armistice rather than a peace agreement. In Seoul's latest drills with US troops, Special forces have worked on infiltrating key command facilities and paralyzing their operations, South Korea's Yonhap news agency reported. The South Korean Army Special Warfare Command said it's preparing for various provocations from the North, including terrorist attacks. We will move in, strongly suppress them, and punish them until the end. Shin, the defense chief, also visited a key wartime command bunker in Songnam, just south of Seoul. He said the joint exercise will hone operations to neutralize the North Korean nuclear and missile network at an early stage and attack the enemy in all areas, including land, sea, air, space, cyber, and electromagnetic waves. We need to further strengthen our capabilities so that we can overwhelm them.